Just this year alone, I've seen numerous videos from art creators speculating about the future of Arc 1 and of course, the highly anticipated launch of Arc 2. With each Community Crunch update, the devs throw out some crumbs and concept art, but we're yet to see any hard evidence they're actually working on a game. Jeremy Stieglitz, who's co-founder of Studio Wildcard, recently announced on Twitter that a roadmap for 2023 will be with us by the end of March. But right now, I wanted to focus on what we do know. And with the release of Extinction on Nintendo Switch, that means unless they plan to sell the Genesis DLC, then by the end of April, Grove Street Games will begin their work on porting Arc 1 over to Unreal 5. Jeremy did announce that he was happy with the work that they've done so far with Arc Discoveries and the Switch ports, and he also said that much of the underlying non-GFX technical work has already been done, and that the Arc 1 remaster will be using the UE 4.27 for the migration. So when it comes to the Arc 1 remaster, Grove Street Games will be responsible for it, and I'm afraid I can't really speak for the stability of Arc on the Switch as I don't plan to melt mine anytime soon. Let's be honest, why would I want to experience the game this way? If my frame rate drops to like 10 frames a second on an orbital supply drop, then how unstable will it be to face off against the King Titan? It's like saying Cyberpunk 1.0 could be played from start to finish upon its release, but it doesn't necessarily mean it made for a good experience. It is a bit unfair to judge this stuff before its release, and if I was Studio Wildcard, I would want to be available on other platforms. With Grove Street Games already being responsible for both iOS, Android, and now the Switch ports, outsourcing this work does make perfect sense. So, bearing in mind, I play Arc on PC. I'm not going to play it on my Switch, and I'm not going to put it on my phone, so, in a selfish kind of way, I don't really care about this stuff. And even if I had no other way to play it other than on my Switch or a mobile phone, I would still not bother playing it. I mean, why would I? This, however? This I'm interested in. But Link, I am not sure you'll be able to stop him. But I'm getting sidetracked here. Here's my problem. When we look at the abysmal job Grove Street Games did with the GTA Defective Edition, and I know this isn't the same thing as it's a free update, but the lack of effort that went into this beloved trilogy of games, and the opportunity to show a whole new generation that never got to experience these classics was wasted. The love and attention needed to make these games enjoyable wasn't present. Now I do hate to knock a small company, but when we look at Grove Street Games and their website, you can see here the games that they've been responsible for, dating right back to 2009 and the Ghostbusters video game. But as we scroll down the website, you can see defying expectations with a screenshot of an old extinction tech suit. Cutting edge. We live every day to push artistic, technical and creative boundaries of gaming and work hard to become a little bit better at what we do. Well, you need to become a little bit better at what you do. I mean, look, if this is supposed to be the future, I mean, let's just zoom in on this. Like, can you see if this is the Redwoods on Unreal 5, you need to get rid of the rocks in the middle of the tree here. And the fact that you put this as a screenshot on your website as if this is new cutting edge technology kind of has me worried. So with all that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a better mod version of Arc 1 in Unreal 5 than what Grove Street end up coming up with. And I don't think that's an unreasonable assessment, being that the definitive edition of GTA was being done with the intention of being sold. This, on the other hand, is just an afterthought that's going to be free. And perhaps it's free because we're going to get a delay on Arc 2. And this might just keep some interest in the meantime. What I personally hope is that with the announcement on Steam of Arc 2 being third person only and having Souls-like combat, is that the reaction from the community was so loud they threw the whole project in the bin to start again. Because at the end of the day, Wildcard, this is why I bought your game on day one of early access.
go back to basics wildcard and take your time. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.